Good afternoon, my Marie News Media TV family. Welcome back to the channel for another news update for March 17, 2024. And in the news this afternoon, 26-year-old gunned down in Westmoreland. A man was shot dead along the Hertford Main Road in the vicinity of Petersfield, Westmoreland on Saturday night. The deceased has been identified as 26-year-old Romario Grant, otherwise called Dodds, a laborer from the community. Reports from the police are that the citizens reported they heard a load explosions and summoned the police. Upon their arrival, the now deceased was seen lying in a pool of blood, suffering from what appeared to be gunshot wounds to his upper body. He was assisted to the Savannah Namar Public General Hospital, where he was pronounced dead. Investigations are ongoing. According to the police's crime statistics, the parish has recorded 20 murders as at March 16. Taylor accused of pulling gun during dispute charge. A 40-year-old Taylor has been charged with possession of a prohibited weapon and assault at a common law following an incident in Paradise Norwood in St. James on Saturday, March 2. He is Donald Reed, otherwise called Pam Pam, of Paradise in the parish. According to reports, Reed and another man had a dispute during which Reed allegedly brandished a handgun and pointed it at the man and threatened to shoot him before leaving the scene. The incident was subsequently reported to the police and Reed was arrested and charged. His court date is being finalized. Two Jamaicans charged after reportedly being held with US $70,000 at airport. Two Jamaicans are to face the court to answer to charges in relation to breaches under the Proceeds of Crime Act after US $70,000 was seized at the Norman Manley International Airport in Kingston on Tuesday, March 12. They are 44-year-old Dino Baker, a mason of Boodle's Crescent Old Harbor St. Catherine, and 34-year-old Randy K. Blair, a cosmetologist of Harrison Town St. Anne. Baker and Blair were charged with the following offenses. Possession of criminal property, cross-border movement of funds, bringing criminal property into Jamaica, concealing criminal property, and the conspiracy to bring criminals into Jamaica. Reports are that about 5.40 p.m., Baker and De Blair arrived at the Norman Manley International Airport on a flight from the Providenciales Turks and the Caicos. During security procedures, anomalies were reported observed in both of their luggage. As a result, a search was conducted of both their luggage, which reportedly led to the discovery of U.S. $39,828 and the U.S. $30,460 inside the Baker's and the Blair's luggage, respectively. Both the monies were allegedly found concealed in jars with hair products. Baker and the Blair were subsequently taken into custody. Following a question-and-answer session in the presence of their attorneys, they were charged on Friday, March 15, by detectives assigned to the Narcotics Police Division. They are scheduled to appear before the Kingston and the St. Andrew Parish Court on Thursday, March 21. St. Catherine man charged for allegedly stealing phone and shooting victim. The police have charged a 21-year-old man with several gun-related offenses following an alleged phone robbery on Oakland Drive in Kingston on March 6. He is Darmani Jackson, otherwise called a brown man, of Rosemary Lane, Portmore in St. Catherine. He has been charged with wounding with intent, robbery with aggravation, possession of prohibited weapon, and unauthorized possession of ammunition. Reports from the Hunts Bay Police in St. Andrew are that, about 5.10 p.m., Jackson pointed a firearm at a man, took his cell phone, then opened a gunfire at him, hitting him in the right side of his abdomen. In a bid to escape further injuries, the victim ran to seek assistance while Jackson escaped in the area. The police were alerted and upon their arrival, the injured man was taken to the hospital where he was treated and released. Jackson was subsequently arrested. And 21-year-old Paul Donaldson of Seaview Avenue, Kingston 13, has been charged with several breaches of the Firearms Act following an incident which occurred in his community on March 13. He has been charged with wounding with intent, possession of prohibited weapon, unauthorized possession of ammunition, and using a prohibited weapon to commit a felony. Reports from the Hunts Bay Police are that about 10.55 p.m., Donald Dusson pulled a firearm from his waist and opened gunfire at a man, hitting him in both legs. 
The man managed to run to a police and military checkpoint where he made a report and was assisted to the hospital. He was admitted in serious but stable condition. Donaldson was later arrested. Board of National Identification and Registration Authority named a nine-member board has been established to oversee operations of the National Identification and Registration Authority. The authority is a precursor to the launch of the National Identification System NIDS. NERO will, in due course, assume administration of the Civil Registration System in Jamaica, eventually replacing the Registrar General's Department and provide enhanced services. Prime Minister Andrew Holness met with the members of the authority Friday and charged them to maintain the highest standards of trust and integrity and work for the benefit and advancement of Jamaicans. Prime Minister Holness asserted that the needs will add value to securing identity information. The members of the National Identification and Registration Authority are Bishop Conrad Pitkin, Attorney George Hamilton, Reverend Newton Dixon, Henrik Steele, Alaka Jane, Maria Thompson Walters, Sharika Hemmings Allison, Emil Holgate, and the Gordon Christopher Record. This office is there to carry out a function of the state that continues regardless of who is in government or what the political policies are. This is about the establishment, the protection, and the utility of citizens' identity, citizens' records, and the civil registry within which these are entailed and protected. In our system of governance in our country, we want people to participate because they see the value in participation. They, they see the benefit. And then it becomes a duty that is not enforced, but a duty that people see that they should fulfill because it is good for the society and it is good for themselves. So this system that we are speaking about, our national identification system, is built on it being a utility, meaning that it is a service that has value for people uh, and therefore they will seek to participate, seek to join and they will feel safe in doing so. Ex-pastor brought it back to court on further charges following 2020 Bogri charge. A former pastor who was brought up on Bogri charges back in 2020 is back before the court on fraud charges. 32-year-old Anthony White was remanded into custody until March 22 when he appeared before the Kingston and the St. Andrew Parish Court on Tuesday to answer to charges of conspiracy to defraud and the computer-related fraud. He is accused of illegally obtaining funds via wire transfers. Highlighting the pastor's reported checkered past, Senior Parish Judge Lorian Cole Montague said White's previous run-ins with the law would not assist him in his current situation. Expressing her disappointment in someone she outlined was raised on good Christian principles, Montague said White is constantly finding himself on the wrong side of the law. You are 32 years old, a fairly young man, but you have quite the checkered past. You are before the court again for sentencing, this time for fraud, and I am not under the impression that you are being forthright about what you have done, she said. It is disappointing because you were exposed to good Christian principles. It is disappointing because you were exposed to good Christian principles. You started on your quest as a minister of religion, so for you to have done what you did, it's really bad. Setting another date for the matter to be heard once more, Montague ordered that the defendant be remanded until all evidence has been properly filed. White has another matter before the St. Anne Circuit Court. It is alleged that in 2020, the ex-pastor sexually molested a 12-year-old boy who was reportedly a member of his Seventh-day Adventist church. White, who fled the island two years following the allegations, was deported back to Jamaica to face a trial. This after the Fourth Circuit in the United States, where he fled, threw out his asylum petition.